find out how we used our leftover Halloween candy to make a spooky dessert. And as the spooky spirit begins to fade, the air fills with holiday spirit and rumors of Starbucks revival of their seasonal menu. Delta Airline pilots have not seen an increase in pay in over three years. Will there be a strike? Find out as your TV2 News in a Flash starts right now. This is TV2 News. Good Tuesday morning, Portage County, and welcome back to TV2 News. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I'm Lindy Griesinger. And I'm Natalie DeSantis. We are kicking off the show this morning by putting our baking skills to the test. That's right. We teamed up to show you how to make the spooky season last just a little bit longer by incorporating your leftover Halloween candy into some baked treats. Today we are making um, brownies and we are incorporating our leftover candy from Halloween. We are going to be making some chocolate chip muffins with a twist. <laughs> so, so let's get started. We're gonna first start out with preheating the oven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to 350. All right, so first we wanna heat the oven to 400 degrees. And now we're gonna make our brownie mix. All right, so we need brownie mix, oil, eggs, and water. How's it look? One third? One third. All right, beautiful. We're gonna start mixing, but we're gonna start with a spatula just to kind of break up the chunks and make it a little mm -hmm. bit easier for the the whisk. Now we're whisking. Beautiful. So Natalie is going to cook it up <laughs> with the mix and I'm going to cut up these Crunch and Twix bars. Loving it. Loving um, it. Just cut them up to put them in the mix and then we'll bake it and go. Okay. I feel like that's good. That's perfect. Because I don't want the candy to like take over. Mm -hmm. You know. 100%. So we're going to whip her up. All right, so now we're gonna spread it. And now we're gonna go in with our leftover Halloween candy. I'm breaking these up. It doesn't oh, have to be pretty, caramel. it just has to be delicious. I didn't even think about the caramel and Twix. Now that, that looks like it's beautiful. A good brownie to me. So then um, as soon as our oven is preheated, we're going to pop this in and let it bake. Are we preheated? We are preheated. I don't know if it's, is it ready? Are you ready? I feel like we're, let's oh, start. Oh my gosh. It was divine intervention. I love that it. That was that beautiful. Was okay. The Halloween gods were right. looking okay. up on us. All right. Now let's see how much, how long do we have to go in for? 17 to 22 minutes. That's very specific. <laughs> We are going to put the brownies in the oven for 34 to 37 minutes and we'll see how it goes. All right, so let's take this out. Yum, Ooh, that looks so that looks good. so good. Let's cut into these. Let's cut them into little squares. These look so good. It's cutting so nice. Wow. Slay. Amazing. I'm going to put them down now. Fabulous. Oh, oh. I'm gonna sprinkle them now because um, so they can mix it in. Yeah, exactly. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Yum. Those are so good. Cheers. Oh wait, absolutely. So true. Cheers to you, Della. Oh my god. No, this slaps. Mm hmm. I'm gonna rate these an 11 out of 10. I really like 12 them. out of 10. I agree with that. No, so I agree with that. Because they're not only just brownies, but they're brownies with your leftover Halloween candy. What more can I ask You really can't ask for much more. It's like a canvas, you know? No. You could do that. You could do the recipe, but you could also add something to it mm -hmm. and it would still be amazing. It's been really fun making brownies. For TV2 News, I'm Mara O'Malley. And I'm Lindy Griesinger. I'm Della Fowler. And I'm Natalie DeSantis. Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! And to move your way into November, you can build your own Thanksgiving terrarium today. The Flash Activities Board will have free succulents, jars, soil, and fall decorations while supplies last. Join the fun today from 5 to 7 in the Student Center. Today from 6.30 to 8 p.m., Ignite is holding session one of their Pink Table Talk at the Tri-Towers Complex. 
Ignite is a women-led organization that helps women explore their political power and get involved in their community. All are welcome to attend and registration is still open. It seems like we aren't the only ones still in the spooky spirit. Take a look at the footage NASA released of the sun. It appears to have a jack-o'-lantern smile. The dark areas that make up the face are called coronal holes. These holes release streams of solar wind that is powerful enough to reach Earth. The winds are largely deflected, but they can still disturb the atmosphere. That sun really did want to just hold on to this Halloween season, but now that it is officially November, let's see if it's time to pull out those winter jackets for this Christmas season. Good morning, Portage County. I'm Mara Malley, and let's take a look at what we got going on in Kent. So right now it's about 54 degrees, a little bit warmer though. It feels like 56. We got a dew point at 54 degrees, which gives us a humidity at 94%. We have wind coming in from the southwest at one mile per hour and a visibility of up to three miles. So all across northeast Ohio, we are looking at temperatures ranging from the low 50s to just about 60 degrees up in Cleveland. Pretty much all around the same all over northeast Ohio, 50, 60, we got that going on. And then for your seven day forecast across Kent, we just have temperatures ranging from your low 60s to your high 70s. So some sun still peeking in throughout the week going uh, today and then next week, Sunday and Monday, a little bit of rain, but not too much. So we got a little bit of sun left. So I wouldn't say it is just yet time to pull out those winter jackets and those winter boots. We have some sun and some high temperatures still. So have a great day, Portage County. I'm Mara O'Malley. Back over to you, Lindy and Natalie. The Portage County Health District is hosting a vaccine clinic today. The clinic offers vaccines such as COVID-19, shingles, pneumonia, and more. The clinic begins at 8 and it goes until 12 p.m. You can call the number on your screen to schedule an appointment for a vaccine. A popular homework help application is facing some controversy after a complaint was made regarding their security. The Battle of Ohio, can the Browns defense handle Joe Burr? Stay tuned. Tomorrow's news leaders. Today's top stories. From an award-winning student newsroom. This is TV2 News, truly Portage County. Welcome back. The Federal Trade Commission is cracking down on a popular homework help application. In a complaint made on Monday, regulators accused the company of numerous security lapses. A former Chegg contractor was able to steal the names, email addresses, and passwords of around 40 million users. Chegg must now provide security training to employees, encrypt user data, give consumers access to any personal data they collect, and to give access to delete their records. Delta Airline pilots are currently negotiating a new contract. This has been going on since April of 2019 when the terms of their agreement made in 2016 expired. Because of this, these aviators have not had a pay increase in three years. On Monday, they voted in favor of organizing a strike. Though this vote does not guarantee a strike, it is pushing the carrier to hasten their decision-making process in the negotiation. A Swiss railroad company broke the record for the world's longest passenger train this weekend. An average Swiss passenger train is typically about 20 kilometers or 20.5 miles, but this world record is nearly 12 times the average carrier. Thousands of railway enthusiasts line the path to watch the Alpine crews carry 150 passengers. Rise and shine, Portage County. It's sports time. I'm Della Fowler, and we will take it here, the Battle of Ohio in prime time. What more could we want? On Halloween, nonetheless, fans are dressed up and ready to go. We will take it here, ball snap straight to Nick Chubb. He will find a hole and run it up the middle. The Browns are up early. 
And here, Brissette, he'll fake it to Chubb, trying to find someone. If not, it's okay. Take it in yourself, Jacoby. To the corner for a touchdown, extending that lead. Browns in the red zone yet again. This time, Brissette finds Cooper wide open. It's Amari with the party. Bengals, what happened? Here they are, finally, Burrow back. Runs out of the pocket, and he will finally find his guy, Tyler Boyd, in the end zone. Finally, a score for Cincy, but Nick Chubb ain't done yet. Down the middle, Browns again. Welcome to the game, Cincinnati. We have been waiting for you literally all night. Burrow, long pass to T. Higgins here. But the question is, do they have time to come back? This is in the fourth, and they will not. A win for the home team. Browns on top, 32-13. to And we have some exciting matching coming up later on. It is going to be a fun night coming up this evening. Cat State will face off at home tonight against Ball State. Although they are sitting pretty at second place in the division, don't count out the flashes. On average, Ball State scores around 24.5 points per game. This season, Wild Kent averages 28.4. The key to success here is the team working together on both sides of the fall. Of the ball, my bad. Offense has to show up and score early along with that defense coming in to make some big stops like they did against Akron last week. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. at Dick Stadium tonight, and hopefully on a little more rest, those flashes can work together to get a W and move up in the division. And that is all we have time for today. Enjoy some fun sports content on our new TikTok at TV2 Sports. I've been Della Fowler. Have a great day, Portage County. And rumor has it, Starbucks is set to bring back its holiday menu on November 2nd. Among the returning sips is the sugar cookie almond milk latte. Other beverages featured on the menu include the peppermint mocha, caramel brulee latte, toasted white chocolate mocha, chestnut praline latte, and Irish cream cold brew. Now that Halloween is officially over, the holidays are in the air. And today is National Cook for Your Pets Day. While there are many high quality foods out there, taking the time to create a yummy meal can add nutrients and variety to your pet's diet. But too much of a good thing can lead to health problems, so it's important to make sure to feed them too much proteins, fats, or vitamins. Not only will your pet appreciate love from a homemade meal, but you too will feel satisfied when your pet enjoys every bite. So, do you guys cook for your pets? I actually cook, so I have chickens, um, oh. and I cook uh, grits, for them and it's Aww. kind of like a little tasty treat, especially in the colder months. Oh, that's you know, so nice. Over the summer, my best friend actually worked at a restaurant called The Lazy Dog. I don't know if they exist up in Northeast <laughs> Ohio, but you can come and eat a meal with like your family or whatever, but they'll also cook for the dogs. So oh, you can that's so like, That is cute. such a great yeah. idea. So they that totally need one, yeah. one of those over here because I don't think we have one over here. Right, well, hopefully everybody can get to cook for their pets today. Yes. <laughs> um, and that is all the time that we have for this morning. For updates on these stories and more, be sure to visit our website, KentWired.com, and follow us on social media at KentWired. I'm Lindy Griesinger. I'm Natalie DeSantis. I'm Mara O'Malley. And I'm Della Fowler. Have a great day, Portage County. Thank you.